I thought I said vermin chili, but that's a type of noodle. Um, but vermin? Did you just that, say vermin chili? It is a type like of a, like a spicy rat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> G'day guys, welcome back to another week of Blind Wine Reviews. Thanks so much for coming along. Of course, smash the subscribe button. It really helps the channel out if you're enjoying some of the stuff that we're putting forward. And thank you, as always, to Sometimes Always for providing a cheeky little discount and sourcing all the wines for us. Uh, if you want to get access to that discount, it is in the Discord server linked in the description below. Let's get into it. All right, number 15, let's go. Uh, we have a lovely golden, uh, huge green highlighted uh, little white wine. White number to start out with, uh, a little bit of yellow color to it. Might be a bit textural, let's find out. Yum, yum. It smells like hefty slathering of uh, oak in a good way. It's got that kind of nutty saline, almost like shabbly like smell, which always gets me excited. It's not Chardonnay, I don't think. Um, which is something I don't come across too often. I don't think it's Chardonnay, so watch it, watch it be Chardonnay. It doesn't smell like it, doesn't taste like it. I don't know. I don't know wines very well, as it turns out. This is such a common theme. All right, so... You know, I was initially thinking that was Riesling, and could well be, but it does have a real mineral acid drive that's really, really tight. I mean, it smells more oaky than it tastes, which is really cool. It's got this great restraint uh, in the use of its oak, and it feels a bit like almost like German Riesling-esque, but probably in a New World way. I'll like six bottles of it, and I reckon this is gonna be, I reckon 45 bucks a bottle. It, it's got a bit of flavor to it. It's not just a boring, simple, easy drinking white wine. It's a bit more interesting than that. Wine number two, we have another white wine, and it is of brilliant clarity. This feels like a winter, like it, it smells like a beach in winter. It's got this cool like sea spray, but it's like really rocky and chilly. This one smells a lot more acidic than the last one, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna say citrus up here, acid, question mark. Cool. Smells like it spent a longer time on the vine, ripening nice and slowly, really ideal conditions. Um, and it has a really complex lifted aromatic. It's one of those wines that you smell and you're like, oh cool, I'm gonna have this really clean crystal high acid number, but then you taste it and it's got this really voluptuous uh, texture. This is sweet. This is very sweet wine. I reckon what this is, I think this is an off dry style of white wine where they've cut the fermentation short, left a lot more residual sugar in the grapes and that's why it's so sweet. I'm swallowing that. That's amazing. That's an amazing um, off dry. I've seen examples like this out of Alsace as well. So it could well be, um, could well be a cheeky little French number, but that is uh, irrespective. It is very impressive. It's from a cool climate uh, and really, really classically well made. Number three, middle of a traffic light. Two, two out of three Barocas today. Smells like one too, that's really cool. Ooh, I like the smell of it. I'm thinking it's unfiltered or that we just use a slightly dirty glass and we pour it. It's one of the two. Orange marmalade, little green olive tapenade if there ever is such a thing. Yeah, cool. This is probably some kind of Skinzy Italian number. It's got that kind of bergamot, burnt, burnt orange peel. It's like drinking an apricot. This is like apricot juice. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sick. I hope, I want a dozen of it. Not as weighty as a lot of wines, it's quite thin. Might be pretty low, lo probably be lower in alcohol. It's got a great, like, tannin. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. This is a little bit wild. It's got a little bit of a, uh, a funk to it. Not in a bad way, in a really, really good way. But I actually quite enjoy this wine. I wouldn't probably reach for it all that regularly because I reckon you'd get sick of the bitterness. Like upwards of five years to start looking like utterly amazing and guaranteed this wine will eventually look utterly amazing. What we've got here, it looks to be a lovely salmon colored rosé. That is really pretty. It's got this like strawberry whiz fizz. It smells like a showground without the vomit. I think this is a uh, potentially what we call a sanye. So instead of grapes, red grapes that are being pressed really quickly to only get a, a lick of color, I actually think this has potentially been bled off uh, from a red ferment. It smells a bit of almost raspberries. Uh, I usually say strawberries when I try rosés, but I'm mixing it up a little bit. Lovely acid. Really like rose, rose petal-y tea-like. It's got this great zingy, like natural acidity to it that I think is really freaking yum. I'd go almost as far to say that this is probably a white wine that's been blended with a red wine uh, and has been then matured in cask, large cask for a large amount of time. This is a really interesting rosé. Yep, cool. 
inoffensive rosé. I'd probably have it a little bit colder if it was my preference. Uh, chuck it in the fridge for a little bit. It, this would be great with food. This would be so sick with food. And a blanket surrounded by trees and flowers. First red of the lineup, and it is a, a light colored red, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be light bodied. Let's check it out. Yep, uh, smells like red wine. I don't know what else to say about it. I think it's gonna be a little bit acidic. Yeah, it does have that really like new oak character. There's like this kind of slight lactone milky thing kicking on the background, but it really works with the fruit character of the wine. It smells a bit like a, a good kind of new world Pinot. There is a density and a warmth and a richness and generosity. It's not jumping out of the glass with incredible complexity. So that's how you do new oak really well. It's not overbearing. It works really well with the wine and probably lends this to age further on down the track. It's actually a pretty bang up job for whoever has done this. It's a really interesting, young, lighter bodied red. I think this would set me back around about 50 bucks. I'd be grabbing six bottles, not, not jumping at the chance right now for it. Let's go, last one. Wow, this is natty. This is absolutely natty as hell. More red, looks even... Okay, look, I didn't finish the last one, so we can do the colour comparison. This is deeper, this is lighter. Like, you can see your hand through that one really easily, you can't see it through there. It's got this really cool, rustic, um, grippy tannin. Love the fruit character of this, really punchy red berries, nothing too overly ripe, great acidity. What we have the other week was something called Glue Glue. Very similar in sort of style here, where it's just easy, drinkable, fun. This could be like Cab Franc or something savory. It's got this cool like leathery tobacco thing layered over these cool like really taut little red berries with plenty of energy. I think this is a freaking yummy wine. I'm gonna go 38 bucks and I'm gonna grab 12 bottles. That's light, that's bright, that's juicy, it's grapey. Because it doesn't taste expensive, it's gonna be expensive. So I'm gonna say this one's a $50 bottle of wine. But overall, really fun lineup. Uh, what have I got? Two 12s, couple of half dozens, and even the threes aren't bad. They're just not my sort of wine, so. Be very interested to see what the other boys think, and let's get them all back in. Um, how, what did you guys think of the lineup? It was, um, it was pretty sick. Very variable. Okay, yeah, I was really, I, it's really variable. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. First wine. First cab off the rank. Very, what did you guys think? Very delicious. This is the one I bought the most of. It's probably what do you reckon? What do you reckon? What is it? Shit. Shit, give me, give me 26 a lot. 26 bucks. 26 bucks. Yeah, yeah, okay. where were we? Uh, ah. It's a Fiano Greco blend. That's a little bit different. That's a little bit distinct. And it probably makes a little bit sense. Uh, Fiano is an incredible, uh, incredibly phenolic uh, great variety. Cool. Very fun and really good value. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, speaking of residual sugar, this this particular wine was Jove. I was all about this. Yeah. Did you pick it up? No, I run that shit back. When I tasted it, I was like, check out the residual sugar in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Left a lot more residual sugar in the grapes, and that's why it's so sweet. What have we got, Lockheed? All right, cool. Could go either way. Vouvray or Riza? It's Riza. A little bit of prawn. Oh, God. God. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. We've been treated. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As always. <laughs> That's um, uh, JJ Prom uh, Cabinet. Uh, style. So this is actually quite um, a brilliant, uh, brilliant example. Yeah. If you want to learn about uh, Germanic reasonings, this is the producer to go mm. to. For Dan. Sure. What have we got, Lockie? Yeah, I was pretty good. 40 bucks. So I'm happy with that. I think pretty good. Yeah. What we got? It's like Bianco, old so it's Italian. Old World. Vino Bianco. Bianco. Casa Bianco. Um, the uh, producer. No, it's brought in by Lo Fi Wines so in Australia. Checks out. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, sometimes always Google. Sometimes always Google. Very cool. 2019 off Sometimes Always. Yep. Um, so yeah, definitely looking very young. I've gone for six bottles and I wanted to put two or three in the cellar yep. and see in about four or five years. Rosé territory. Oh, I thought it was Chardonnay. <laughs> Kidding. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, I was on four. I was on 35. I was on 30. That's a 30. It's Ricardo. Is Ricardo it? Ricardo Rosé. For real? Yeah. Dude, that's sick. That's that's fucking great. That's sick. That's so, fun ass. Do you know much about Frappato? Almost too much, but explain it to the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> so Frappato is an awesome grape variety from Sicily. Uh, we don't actually have it in Australia yet. Uh, we'd love to be able to get it in Australia sometime. Um, but it's sort of the yin to Niradavli yang, yeah. right? Can handle really high heat. Yep. And it can handle, and it produces these uh, wines that are just really light, delicate, fun, easy drinking. <laughs> All right, this little, this little red, this little red had me sort of like a little bit skew if I wasn't too sure. This it is feels it. Australian Nebbiolo Sangiovese, like Australian Italian. It's got, I mean, <gasps> nah. What think going on? What have we got, Lockie? 45 bucks? Bang, bang on. on. I said yeah, bang, bang on. Bang on. on. You're in eight. Whiston Lake, baby. Yeah, there we Told go. Told you. What did, well I, what did I say? There you go. Oh, Warmer so climate good. Pinot. 
uh, and with some like one of the the key sort of mark producers uh, out of the Adelaide Hills doing an incredible job. Uh, absolutely. If they had crew very, vineyards very cool. for the Adelaide Hills, this would be Grand Cru's this top tier shit. There you go, picked it, mate. Picked it. Such good wine. Last of the wine. This was probably my my wine of lineup. I liked this. Really? I love this. And what do we what do we got, Lockie? Because I was like 30, I was hoping for 38 bucks or less. I said 45. I said 50. Oh! Yeah! Oh. <laughs> yeah! What do we got? Oh, what is this? Peter, frankly, Bob made this oh. wine. Yeah. Ugh. Absolutely. Oh, it was made by Tom, actually, sorry. Made by Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, frankly, this wine was yeah. made by Bob, but Tom. Yeah. Probably will frankly yeah. include this. Tommy Sum. That's fine. Uh, this, so it is. Huh. It's the winery is frankly this wine was made by Bob Bob Coleman. This is Tom Coleman, Bob's son, uh, has produced this absolutely cracking. I'm not even sure what it is. I think it'll be a field blend of different red grapes. So for those that are interested in grabbing something out of I believe orange um, and and thereabouts uh, and surrounds, this is one of those uh, producers that I'll be uh, jumping at a chance to be able to to get. Sicily, Amelia Romagna. We've been to Germany, been to the Adelaide Hills, regional, regional New South Wales. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely incredible. Fuck, that's actually a great lineup. Really good haul. Really good haul. Well, until next week, we'll be here. Deuces. <laughs>